Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's do the prayers before our class. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Pur Bhavaswa, Tatsavitra Varenayam, Vargo Devasya Dimayam, Diyo Yona Prachodaya, Astoma Sargamya, Tamasoma Jyotirgamya, Mrityurma Amritam Gamya, Om Sena Vaktu, Sena Bhunatu, Seviriyam Karva Gai, Teja Svina Vadhi Tamastu, Ma Vidvesha Vahe, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Uddhav Gita, we are on chapter 11. And let's look at verse number 21. And Lord Krishna is telling Uddhava and to us also. Ahinsa satyam asteyam akam krodh lobhata bhut priye hiteha cha dharmo yam sarv varnika. Non-violence, truthfulness, honesty. Desire for the happiness and welfare of all others. And freedom from lust, anger and greed constitute duties for all members of society. So everybody needs to follow this. That's why we see that these are the fundamentals taught in every household to the little kids. Okay. Every religion talks about it. Every ism talks about it. And we are familiar with all these terms. Ahinsa, Satya, Stay, Kaam, Krodh, Lobh. So the phrase Sarv Varnikaha refers not only to those acting within the Varnashram system, but those outside of it as well. Okay, so everybody, every human being can practice non-violence, restraint from stealing, the giving up of a lust, anger and greed, and a charitable disposition toward others. The qualities of non-violence, truthfulness, honesty, restraint of lust, anger and greed, and looking after the welfare of others are held in esteem in all human societies. Okay, no matter where we go on this globe, human beings who have these qualities, they are considered good people. Next verse, 22. Dvityam prapye anupurne yaj janmopan yanam dvija vasan guru kule dante brahma dhiye chakuta the twice born member of the Varnashram society should undergo the purificatory rituals beginning with the Garbadhan. See, Garbadhan is a sanskar which parents perform when they want to have a child in their home. Garbadhan. And culminating in the sacred thread initiation ceremony which is called a Janeu ceremony. He should then uh, reside in the ashram of the spiritual master while practicing self-control and studying the Vedic literature. So twice born member of the Varna ashram. Okay. The Lord describes the qualities of the members of the four ashrams in the following nine verses. Brahmans, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas are known as Dvij or twice born. They observe the system of sanskars or purificatory rites beginning with the Garbadhan sanskar and later on receive the Gayatri mantra which signifies their second birth through spiritual initiation. 
So Gayatri Mantra is given at the time of the Janev Sanskar when a child goes to Gurukul. Thereafter, when they are called by the Acharya, they go to live in the Gurukul where they practice self-control and study the Vedas. The term Dvij or twice born here indicates the three superior classes, namely Brahmans, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas. The lowest class of men, the Shudras, as well as those who are outside the Varnashram society, do not observe the purificatory rites that are performed by the higher three classes. Because of this, uh, their condition is full of ignorance, so they should be carefully guided so as not to become disrespectful of the higher classes of men. Those who observe the purificatory processes should give up whimsical arguments and instead become submissive to the elevated devotees of the Lord. Verse number 23. Mekhlajin Dandaksh Brahma Sutra Kamandalon Jatilo Dhaut Dadvasaho Raktaha Pira Kushan Dadat. A Brahmchari should have met it here. So Brahmchari, like in the first stage of life as a student, he should wear a belt of Kush grass and a deer skin garments. He should carry a staff and a water pot and he should be decorated with aksh beads and a sacred thread. He should be inclined to austerity and thus never accept an opulent sitting place. He should not take very good care of his teeth nor should he be concerned about his clothes. Okay? So it's like a simply simplicity and just a more emphasis on studies. That's what it really means. Verse number 24. Sanan bhojan ho meshu japo chare cha vagyata na chin dhyan na romani kakshopsta matani api. A brahmachari should remain silent while bathing, eating, performing fire sacrifices, chanting mantras, and passing stool and urine. He should not cut his nails and hair, including the armpit and the pubic hair. A brahmachari should always be seen with a waistband, deer skin, push grass, beads, and a sacred thread. He should not be concerned about the whiteness of his teeth or the condition of his clothes. He should neither wear red cloth nor sit on a Red asana. He should remain silent while chanting mantras and while passing the stool or urine. More and more silence. So verbal silence and a mental silence also. Because otherwise, through speaking, we waste a lot of energy. So this is what's recommended. Retoho Navki Reja Jatuhu Brahma Brat Dharaswayama. While observing the vow of celibate brahmachari life, one should never pass semen. If he passes semen involuntarily, the brahmachari should immediately bathe, control his breath by the practice of pranaya and chant the Gaitri mantra. Agne Arkachar Yehego Vitra Guru Vridh Suram Shuchi Samahit Upasit Sandhe Dwe Yat Vag Japane With a purified mind and fixed attention, the Brahmachari should worship the fire god, sun, acharya, cows, brahmans, guru, elderly respectable persons, and demigods at sunrise and sunset. Those are like it, sandhyas. Remaining silent while quietly chanting the appropriate mantras. The brahmachari should remain silent while performing his morning and evening worship. But such a silence is not required when he performs his noontime 
rituals. 27. Acharyam maam vijaniyan navam niyet kaharichit namrityahe buddhyasu yet sarvadev mayo guru. One should know the Acharya as myself and never disrespect him in any way. So it's like a oneness with the Acharya and God. One should not envy him, thinking him an ordinary man, for he is the representative of all the damn cards. So that's why it's called a Guru Dev. So Devta. So unless we have a respect, we will not learn. The Supreme Lord said, you should know the spiritual master as my most dear servant. For this reason, it has been stated, Guru Varam Mukund Prashathen Ven Samarit. Remember the spiritual master as the most beloved devotee of Lord Mukund. One should never disregard the spiritual master by considering him to be an ordinary human being. When the Supreme Lord takes a position of an instructor, desiring to award eternal benefit to the living entities, he becomes known as an Acharya. If one neglects the Acharya, or if a disciple considers himself as equal to his spiritual master and thus displays envy and audacity towards him, then there is no possibility for him to become successful in his vows. This is due to a lack of faith in the spiritual master. Therefore, one who seriously aspires to attain the ultimate goal of life should properly worship the spiritual master, considering him as the supreme personality of a servitor Godhead, instead of considering the Acharya as the object of one's service. One should consider him a staunch servant of Lord Vishnu. Verse number 28. Sayam pratar upaniye bhakshyam tasmei nivediyet yach cha anyad api anugyatam upyunjit sanyata. Every morning and evening, the brahmachari should bring whatever food and other things he has received by begging door to door and offer them to his spiritual master. Thereafter, with a controlled mind, he should accept whatever is allotted to him by his spiritual master. Whatever a brahmachari collects by begging or receives in charity should be offered by the spiritual master. He should only eat or utilize any object after being permitted by the spiritual master. The purpose of human life is to receive one's forgotten relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. See, we often wonder what is the purpose of life. This is the purpose. So the purpose of human life is to receive one's forgotten, revive one's forgotten relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. This mission is accomplished under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master. From childhood, a boy is trained to become very submissive to his spiritual master and very austere in his lifestyle. Whatever a student has collected, he must offer it to the spiritual master and then only accept what is allotted to him by his guru. One who hopes to advance in spiritual life should not want to acquire things for his personal enjoyment. Such training is imparted by the spiritual master to his disciples. And when he sees that his student has advanced, he engages him directly in the service of the Supreme Lord. Verse number 29. Shushman Acharyam Sadopasit one should engage as the humble servant of the Acharya. When the spiritual master goes for a walk, the student should submissively follow him. 
when the spiritual master rests, the disciple should not should also rest lying down near one. Always ready to render any required service. When the spiritual master sits down, the disciple should stand nearby with folded hands, ready to execute his order. When the spiritual master walks, a disciple should follow him like a menial servant. When the spiritual master sleeps, a disciple should sleep nearby. And when he sits on his asan, disciple should stand in front of him with folded hands, awaiting his order. The only means for advancing in spiritual life is to always remain faithfully devoted to the spiritual master. In all respects, one's relationship with the spiritual master should be that of a master and servant. In this regard, one should contemplate this verse from the Padam Purana, Uttarakhand. Over there it says, One who performs worship of Lord Govinda but fails to worship his devotees should be understood to be not a devotee of the Lord, but simply a victim of false pride. So this is when we are walking on the path of spirituality. Surrender. We have to learn to surrender to our Guru first. If we cannot surrender to Guru, how can we surrender to God? This is what he's teaching us. Verse number 30. Evam vrito guru kule vased bhoga vivarchita vidyasma pyet yavad vibrad vratam akhanditam. Until his education is completed, a brahmachari should remain at the guru kule, faithfully engaging in the service of the spiritual master while maintaining his vow of celibacy. While living at the Gurukul, a brahmachari should observe strict celibacy. He should not be driven by urges for sense gratification, and he should not think of himself as the enjoyer of the fruits of his karmas. Only in this way can one master the spiritual knowledge that is imparted to him by the spiritual master. So these are the rules if we want to really advance on this path. Yadde aso chand sam lokam arokshyan brahm vishtapam gurve vindya sed deham swadhyay artham brihad vrata If a brahmachari wishes to transfer himself to mahar lokam so like ascending and from there to Brahma Loka, Brahma Loka, he should very thoroughly study the Vedas under the direction of the spiritual master while strictly observing the vow of celibacy. After describing the characteristics of a Brahmachari, who may later on enter the Grishtashram, the Lord now explains the special characteristics of a strict lifelong Brahmachari in six verses. If a brahmachari desires to go to Brahma Loka, he should observe strict lifelong celibacy and fully dedicate himself to his spiritual master while engaging in advanced study of the Vedas. Anyone who desires to attain perfection in life must engage his body, mind and words in the service of the spiritual master without any Separate interest. Verse number 32. Agnyo gurav atmani cha sarvam bhuteshu maam param a prithag dhir upasit brahm varchasve akalmasha. Being enlightened with Vedic knowledge as a result of service to the spiritual master and being freed from all sense and vision of duality, one should worship me as the super soul, as I appear within fire, the spiritual master of one's own self and all the living entities. So we see that Atma in the fire also, in the Guru also, in our own self also, and everywhere else also. 
with this sadhana. The phrase Brahmavrat means the enlightened one attains by carefully studying the Vedic literature. If a person actually becomes enlightened as a result of studying the Vedas, he will never again willfully indulge in sinful activities. In the state of self-realization, one does not proudly consider himself to be the enjoyer of the perishable material objects. Rather, he thinks himself to be an eternal servant of the Supreme Lord, and thus he remains engaged in the devotional service of the Lord without deviation. So if we want to see whether the studies and all the work we are doing on ourselves, huh? working, working or not, we have to see these qualities are in our personality or not. Verse number 33. Istri nam lirikshan sparash sanlap kishavelan adikam pranino mithna bhutana gristo gritas jeta except householders. Members of the other spiritual orders, sannyas, vanprats, and brahmacharis should never associate with women by glancing, touching, conversing, joking, or playing. Neither should they associate with any living entity who is engaged in sexual activities. So the rules for the householders are different. So these rules he is talking about to sannyasis, vanprasts, and brahmacharis. So the other three. Brahmacharis, vanprasts, and sannyasis should never even see birds or insects engaged in sexual intercourse. With a spirit of enjoyment, if the brahmachari sees, touches, intimately converses with, plays with, or jokes with a the woman, then his uh, unation is inevitable. One should not associate with women, talk about women, or even associate or talk about those who are attached to women. This principle is particularly applicable to brahmacharis, vanprats, and sannyasis. If a householder does not control his senses, follow and follow the regulative principles, he is known as a grahavrat or an overly attached householder. That is the danger of household life, where there are many opportunities to engage in unrestricted sense gratification. A sannyasi, brahmachari, or vanprast should strictly avoid everything related to sex and should never even gaze at an animal engaged in sexual affairs. So that to control all our senses, okay, the eyes and the ears and the touch. 34 and 35, they go together. Shaucham, achmanam, sananam, sandhyo upasitam, maam archanam, tirtha seva, japo saprishya, bhakshya samhashe, varjanam. And verse 39, Sarva ashram paryukto yama, ni maha kulanandana, madbhava sarva bhuteshu, mano vak kaya sanyama. Cleanliness, performing achman. Achman is, see, before we do the yanke, we always take the water in our hand and drink. That's called achman. Bathing. Performing the religious duties prescribed for the morning, noon, and evening. Worshipping me, going to holy places of pilgrimage, avoiding those things that are forbidden, and cultivating the understanding that I am situated as the super soul within all living entities. Those practices should be observed by everyone with the body, mind, and speech. So through our kaya, through our mansaha, and vacha. Okay, so it's not just through only one, through our entire personality. 36. 
एवं बृहद व्रत धरो ब्राह्मणो गिर इव ज्वलन मत भरुंज तीव्र तपसा दग्ध कर्माश्यो मला a brahman who strictly observes the vow of celibacy becomes as effulgent and powerful as fire so all these niyams they make us not only clean they just make us effulgent okay because all the purities are being burnt through the tapasya by the strength of his severe austerities he burns to ashes the propensity to perform material activities becoming freed from all material desires he becomes situated in pure devotional services this verse explains how one who observes strict celibacy becomes free from material desires so it's like a slowly and slowly the material desires they just vanish as he makes advancement in spiritual life a devotee of the lord gradually becomes free from material desires so this is one way we can look within are we progressing are our material desires becoming less than before or not? and thus naturally becomes austere and disinterested in mundane enjoyment as a devotee's propensity for serving krishna progressively increases his desire for enjoying or rejecting the fruits of karma is destroyed okay fruits of the karma also are we doing the karma so that we get the fruits or can we just do more and more nishkam karo thus the moon rays of the inclination of the lord's service illuminate the sky of the devotee's heart number 37 atha anantram avekshyan yatha jigyasita gama गुरुवे दक्षिणाम दत्वा स्नानयाद गुरु अनुमोदित ब्रह्मचारी हु डिजायर्स टू एंटर द गृहस्थ आश्रम एफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग हिज वैदिक एजुकेशन शुड ऑफर दक्षिणा टू हिज स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर टेक परमिशन फ्रॉम हिम एंड देन रिटर्न होम एफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग द abhi angast nana or sacred bath gets a snan which is done it's a sacred bath the lord here in explains how a brahmachari who wants to become a grist should return home after duly completing his study of the vedas at the gurukul a brahmachari who wants to enter household of life should return home after offering the remuneration to his spiritual master see there is no fees when a student enters the gurukul but dakshina is that's that is not asked but the students give and taking his permission and then performing the prescribed ritualistic bath this verse describes the procedure for one who desires to return home and enter the household life or household order of life after finishing his education at the gurukul one who has not perfectly assimilated the instructions of the spiritual master is attached to the household order of life which is to be accepted according to the regulations prescribed by the scriptures if one is not careful to observe the prescribed rules and regulations while in household life he certainly becomes a follower so that means whatever he learned he got to follow those even as a householder also so verse number 38 griham vanam va upavesh प्रव्रजेद्वद्विचोतमा 
आश्रमाद आश्रमंग छेन ना अन्यथा मत परश्चरेत इफ ए ब्रह्मचारी वांट्स टू फुलफिल हिज मास्टर्स डिजायर्स ही शुड एक्सेप्ट द गृहस्थ आश्रम इफ ए ब्राह्मण्स ओनली डिजायर इज टू एडवांस ऑन द पाथ ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल रियलाइजेशन ही शुड एक्सेप्ट आइदर द वन प्रस्थ आश्रम और सन्यास आश्रम okay so everybody doesn't have to enter into the grist ashram so from a brahmacharya ashram a person who wants to advance can go into the one prasth okay one who is not surrendered to me should move progressively <coughs> from one ashram to another however and not act otherwise according to one's level of advancement one should situate himself in one of the four ashrams generally one is advised to advance from one ashram to another from the brahmachari ashram to the grihastha ashram then the vanaprastha ashram and finally the sanyasa ashram in this verse it is indicated that those who are not surrendered devotees of the lord must rigidly observe the regulations governing one's authorized social status here however it is recommended that a purified brahman take to the renounced order of life sanyas if however one performs illicit activities on the strength of being transcendental to vedic social divisions one is revealed to be a materialistic neophyte and not an advanced devotee of the lord so it all depends how much attachments we have to this material world but ultimately everybody got to reach that ultimate goal verse number 39 griyarthi sadrishim bharyam udved aju gupitstam yavivyasim tu vayasah yam savarnam anukramat one who desires to enter the grist ashram should marry a girl of his own varan who is beyond reproach who is younger in age thereafter if one wants more wives they should be accepted from one of the lower varans so in that time this was the culture okay it was allowed to have more than one wives one who desires to marry should select a girl from his own caste A Brahman can marry girls of all the four worlds. A Kshatriya can marry girls from three worlds. A Vaishya can marry girls from two worlds, and a Shudra can only marry a girl of his own one. This is the verdict of the revealed scriptures. Let's do one more verse. A Jyadhyan Dana ne Sarve Sham Chadvi Janam Naam. प्रतिग्रहो ध्यापनम च ब्राह्मण सै एव याजनम दोज हु बिलोंग टू द थ्री ट्वाइस बोर्न सोशल ऑर्डर्स शुड परफॉर्म सैक्रिफाइस स्टडी द वेदास एंड गिव चैरिटी ओके सो इट्स लाइक ए अध्ययन दान एंड इज्जिया सो दोज हु बिलोंग टू द थ्री three twice born social orders those who are the brahman kshatriya and vaishya should perform sacrifice study the vedas and give charity however only brahmans can accept charity teach the vedas and perform sacrifices on behalf of others every member of the three higher worlds should worship the supreme lord study the vedas and give charity however acceptance of charity teaching the vedas and acting as a priest on another's behalf can be done only by brahmans and if you remember a person is a brahman according to the qualities not by birth okay vaishya is a vaishya according to the qualities those who are twice born who have undergone the purificatory procedures must worship the supreme lord 
study the Vedic literature and give charity. Among the twice born, only the Brahmins are eligible to accept charity, conduct Vedic sacrifices on behalf of others, and reach the Vedic literature, teach the Vedic literature. Without the guidance of qualified Brahmins, the Kshatriyas and Vaishyas will not be able to properly carry out their duties, nor will they understand the Vedic literature, properly perform sacrifices, or give in charity to deserving persons. All of these activities require the guidance of those who are in perfect knowledge of the truth. When society works under the direction of qualified Brahmins, peace and prosperity prevail and not otherwise. So we'll start next week from verse number 41. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnase Purnamadai Purnameva Visheshate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.